Check, my check, one, two, one, two. I hear the rolling thunder I power throughout the universe display the world and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the tree when I look from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze.
So sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me in the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, it's sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply take me life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more.
leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine discomfort, hear my faith in him to dwell. For I know what ever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know what ever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Oh, the fullness of his love, worth the dress to me is promised, in my fullness of suffering. When my spirit, clothed immortal, wings its flight to realms of death, is my song through Ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the Oh, it 
One more look at Mount Calvary. One more look at Mount Calvary. And it gives me the strength to go. Will the congregation be so kind as to stand? Hear the words of David when the tragedies and uncertainties of life strike. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the service of thanksgiving for the late Delroy Anthony Perrin. Some of you might have been here on Sunday and you've gathered here today again for the laying to rest of another relative from the same family. We greet you warmly. Despite the circumstances under which we meet, we present you into the hands of Jesus. We are happy that we are able to share with you in your moment of grief, whether you are part of the family or you're just part of the community that had a relationship with the deceased. We hope that your time this morning with us will be meaningful, will be memorable, and that when all is said and done, you'll be able to rest safely in the hands of Jesus. We are going to start the program with the opening hymn, He Leadeth Me. We ask that you sing lustily as we celebrate together the leading of God in our lives. I think that would be five, three, seven, Sister Tom. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O word with heavenly comfort from. What air I do, where air I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me. Me by his own and he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes, sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes. Where Eden's wild flowers bloom, by water still or troubled sea, still it is God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me. He leadeth me by. His own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp my hand in nor ever murmur, glorify, content whatever lot I see, since tis my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hands he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hands he leadeth me. And when all earth is done, when by thy grace thy victory won, in death's cold way I will not flee, 
Six God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own hands. He leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be for by his hands he leadeth me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the leadership which you've given us in our lives. From the cradle to this point where we can stand and celebrate and mourn and even comfort the family of the late, your son, Mr. Perrin. We ask you, God, even at this moment, that you will take control of this service. We pray for your spirit, which will, which will give peace to every troubled breast. And we ask that Satan, who is always seeking to bring pain and hurt and confusion, will be kept in check. We present ourselves to you and ask you, O oh God, that you'll continue to lead us even until you lead us into your house forevermore is our asking in Jesus' name. Amen. The program continues. And so at this time, we'll now take the first lesson, which will be read by Tamika Perrin Nice, which comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading from verses 1 through to 11. And then this will be followed by a selection from St. James Mission. Good morning, everyone. I tell myself today I'm going to try not to break down. Death leaves a wound that no one will never understand. For me, on Sundays and days when I don't go to work, I'd see Uncle Chick and my dad coming by the house. And I always wondered, you know, two people that is close and they'll sit there and they'll talk. And then another moment you'll see them arguing. And then I was like, five minutes after. Don't try to go between them five minutes after, because you know, you're wondering if it's the same person that were just arguing, no. And then even to break it, I'd say, Uncle Chick, come on, especially if it's a Sunday, come on and bring me down by an old man that I would give dinner to. And then when he comes back and they are there, you'll be wondering. Those two brothers, you don't got to be between them any at all. All right, so today I'll be reading from Ecclesiastic 3, 1 to 11. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to render and a time to sue, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, 
a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit had he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? And I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. 11 and last, he had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. Do can and the one where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. No sun, no give them a heart yeah, amen church yes because all of us want to be in the canaan land don't it 
Of course, so it's our desire to all be there where the soul will never die. There will be no heartaches, no pain. And that's the place we all want to be. Isn't that so? Yes, but in order to be there, we have to be faithful to Jesus Christ and we have to obey his words. Amen? Amen. We'll now go to the second lesson, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. And this will be done by Ramon Perrin, son. Good morning, everyone. Please bear with me. A reading from Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swollen up in victory. O death, where is thy setting? Where is thy sting, sorry? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved virgin, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. We'll now go to the, this part of the program where we will listen to the tributes, where we will hear about some fond memories of Delroy Perry. On behalf of the Coot Savannah Seventh-day Adventist Church, I would like to express sincere condolences to the family of the late Delroy Perrin. I say to the family, if you have to cry, cry, because God understands tears, right? It's a language that he understand. But I say take comfort in God's word because he's always care for us and he's there to comfort and to guide you. So depend on the Lord, lean on his arms for protection and for courage and strength. The first tribute here on the program comes from the Thorms, the Thorms family, then Edwin Allen High School, and then O'Brien Hawthorne nephew, we'll take them in order as they are on the program, and I see a fourth space signifying that if you are impressed to give a tribute, then you can do so. We'll go in order on the program. Good morning. Today we gather here to express our love and adoration to a remarkable person, Delroy Perry, also known as Mr. P and Daddy. We, his inherited nieces and nephews, share a special bond with him as he opened his home to us with welcoming arms 
and nurtured us as his own over the years, hence the name Daddy. As we reflect on the memories he has left with us, we have created an acrostic of his first name, Delroy. D, down to earth. He was, very, he was a very humble person. He worked and socialized well with everyone, anyone he came in contact with. His well-known greeting was, Wagwan Party speaks volume of his personality. E, he was easygoing. He has never been the one to initiate a fuss or quarrel. He would prefer to mimic the situation and change the mood of the atmosphere. L, lover of sports. Daddy was an avid cricket lover. Once there was a match on Sundays, we would all watch it together. Because of his love for cricket, we're all familiar with his favorite, Courtney Walsh, Brian Lara, Courtney Ambrose, the talk show host, Perkins, and the maverick, Oral Tracy. R, he was always ready to help. If we asked him to take us anywhere, the answer is always yes. Sometimes we didn't know how he fit all of us in that one vehicle. Nevertheless, he would always show up and get us to our destination. His countless trips to school in St. Elizabeth has never gone unrecognized. His favorite girl, Tezzy, was the spoiled one. He made it a part of his duty to religiously take her to and fro from school for most of her primary school years. Oh, open-minded. Whenever faced with any situation, Daddy was known to look beyond the obvious and would never draw random as assumptions. Why? He was very youthful. He was known to have always been lively, energetic, and always share an enthusiastic perspective of life. He's always out and about. He doesn't allow anything to rob him of his serenity. His youthful demeanor was obvious when daddy would buy or gifted anything, he would wear it the next day. When asked if he couldn't wait, he would say, me no know when me go dead, so me have to wear it now. One of my favorite, well, few favorite memories of him was on Sundays, he would always be going on the road and Deshaun, Spuggy and myself would go with him. Sometimes we didn't have any shoes on or in our yard clothes. <laughs> we'll come to Brent and spend the entire day. Sis and Anne will be in charge of us. And then when we got home, until I would have quarrel and say, we got with the pit in them so long, Tony, <laughs> tomorrow at school, you know. And next week, he would do the same thing over again because he would never say no to us. In your life, you taught so many. In your death, many lives were changed. We will not say in grief, he is no more, but in thankfulness that he was. Sleep well, Daddy. We love you, but God loves you best. Okay, so we will take up our Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, after my mother was buried on Sunday and I went by the house to talk with my uncle, the youngest one, Saint, otherwise known as Power. You all know him? Maybe some of you know him. And I could see the grief on his face. You know, his coping strategy is to drink and just let go whatever on his mind. And what did I do? Just allow him to release whatever was on his mind. And sense, Brian, two and he had it done, you know? I did done. 
Rate him, man. Rate him. I did that. And then he started to cry because the dawn is no longer here. So it's a sadness for the entire family. But what stood out for me as my heart is in a state of gratitude is, was his willingness to carry me even to university. That sacrifice he would make just as how he did it for others. And it was through his family, as in his wife, I could get a guarantor to be able to go through university. Thank God. Amen. For Sister Heather Perry. Come on. Amen. And Judith, even though Sister Williams is not there, you know, in terms of the family, but, but both of them were my guarantors. And I'm happy for that. This is what he taught me in terms of driving now. He said, anytime you're going out on the road and another man is calling you and say, come, make certain that you look and see for yourself first before you go out. And that's an approach I've been using now. And I recall persons telling me, come on the road, clear. But when I look out, another vehicle is coming. So that is a big lesson that he has taught me. And I praise God. So I give God the glory for his life. And I've been benefited. And I say, thank you, Lord. All right, I noticed that Edwin Allen is still not here. So we are on for some, for one or two open tributes. So if anyone in the congregation, a family, a friend, you are impressed to say something about Delroy, how he has impacted your life, you are free to do so now. Anyone? All right, it seems as though we have a shy congregation here. Nobody? All right, if not, we have to move on. The program goes on. So we will have a selection by Juleen Palmer Spence at this time. Let us praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord another time. Indeed, we are in the house of the Lord one more time just to give our appreciation to him for all that he's doing for us. Right. And at this time, I just want to say um, condolences to Mrs. Perrin, my dear, dear cousin and um, the immediate family and all the other families. Right at this time, I hope that you will be blessed by this song. I'm sorry that mommy can't make it, she's in pain today, so I'm apologizing for her as well. With you as their shepherd, how could they want this lamb? Has your shelter in times of the storm, always in green pastures, led to still waters, and when you are low, he restores your soul. Some days in your lives, you are feeling so blue. You sometimes can see the flowers for the gloom. But when you stop and take the time, 
a moment or two. You can still feel his presence and still feel renewed. Oh, with you as dear shepherd, how could they want this lamb as your shelter in times of the storm? Always in green pastures, led to still waters, hallelujah. And when they are low, you restore their souls. Whenever dear hurts, or suffering in pain they know that they can all always call on your name it is you that they trust for your always the same when they to the rescue you came with you as their shepherd. How could they want this lamb as your shelter in times of the storms? Always in green pastures. Led to still waters, and when they are low, you restore their souls. And when they are low, you restore their souls. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's only the good shepherd that provides shelter in times of storm. Amen. Yes. And it is a good shepherd at all times in his presence. We still feel renewed. And so we want to thank God for Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, who is the protector and a provider of our lives. The school is here, Edwin Allen High. They might want to refresh themselves. So let me move on to the offertory and then we'll take them. So at this time, I'm going to invite our ushers or deacons to come forward to receive the offering. And as God's children, we are made in his image. And of course, our God is a generous God. He always showers blessings on us in abundance. And of course, he's a faithful God to us. And so we are faithful and we want to show our gratitude in our act of worship now. So let me hope that you will give a tangible offering to help in his in building up his kingdom. Sister T, we are going to pray for the offering. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for being a good God to us. We thank you for the for being the giver of good gifts. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the many blessings of life, for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace which you have bestowed upon us so that we can live and have our being. We thank you. And so at this time, we just want to show our appreciation to you. And so we want to give back a gift in terms of an offering to help towards your cause. Fathers, we give, we ask that you will bless it, bless the givers. And we ask also, Father, that we will give our lives totally to you in Jesus' name. Amen.
So we'll sing the hymn, Precious Memories, Unseen Angels, as the offering is being collected. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. Loving mother, fly across the lonely years, and on hope scenes of my childhood, in for memory of him. Just memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness, precious sacred scenes unfold. As I travel on life's pathway, know not what the years may hold. As I ponder, hope grows fonder, precious memories flood my soul. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the midnight. Precious sacred scenes on Okay, we are going to take the tribute from Edwin Allen High School. Are they inside? Okay, it seems as though they're coming. Very good. Good afternoon, church. As communicated earlier, we are from the Edwin Allen High School, where Mr. Perrin currently serves in the capacity as teacher of information technology. Now, to travel across three parishes for over four hours, you would imagine 
what type of colleague he is. And, does, and does his direct supervisor can tell you that um, to travel so far, it means that Mr. Perrin is more than just a team player. Now, may our condolences at this time, Mr. Perrin, where, where is he? May our condolences offer words of comfort during this extremely difficult time. And I just want you to remember that we are constantly thinking of you and may our prayers ease your pain at this time. I faced a mountain that I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a trouble sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and Forgive me, Jesus, I thought I could control whatever life would throw my way. Oh, but this I will admit has brought me to my knees. I need you, Lord, I'm not ashamed to say. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a trouble sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a trouble sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold, get a hold, get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you in. Sometimes it takes a mountain 
to trust you Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Let's give them a bigger amen, church. They did well. So sometimes it takes a mountain, it takes a troubled sea, desert, whatever it is, my friends, let us believe and let us trust the man, Christ Jesus. Amen? Of course, because he is our promise keeper. So let us believe in him, knowing that he cares for all of us. At this time... We will now have the eulogy, and this will be read by Michelle Coote Dixon, niece. Good day, everyone. It doesn't feel real to be here in a matter of days doing eulogy for an aunt and an uncle. But as the words just sung, Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Hallelujah. He is gone by David Harkins. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he'll come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all he's left. Your heart can be empty or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him only that he is gone or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back or you can do what you want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Eulogy for the late Delroy Anthony Perrin, affectionately called Tony or Chick. On July 14, 1957, Ennisford and Mavis Perrin welcomed their third child into the world. It was a bouncing baby boy. They named him Delroy Anthony. His early development was influenced by his older brothers, Clive and Carl, who soon taught him all sorts of tricks, which got him into a lot of mischief. His parents 
were on a mission to be fruitful and multiply. So within a few years, other siblings were added to the family. Kerry, known to us as Pi, Clover, Carolyn, and Garfield sent. They were added to the brood. His older sisters, Clara and Winifred, who you know as Blossom, also played an integral part in his development. Although they did not share the same residence all the time. To this day, big sister Blossom continues to be like a mother hen in the family. Guiding their children on a pathway that would lead them to Christ was the aim of his parents. They ensured that the entire household worshiped and participated in all the activities at the Kut Savannah SDA church. Tony got baptized and was actively involved in this church, which made his parents very proud. Unfortunately, as he developed into, an, into adulthood, he deviated from the Christian pathway and was not so much involved in his church activities. He constantly shared his memories of his church involvement and the quality of singing at this church while he was an active member of the choir. According to him, they can't sing now like they used to sing in those days. Delroy started his early education at Friendship Primary School, then moved on to Savannah Lamar High School. After school, he pursued a certificate course in accounting at West Indies College, now known as Northern Caribbean University. Upon completing his studies, he was successful in gaining employment at Westmoreland Parish Council for a few years, then Meat Plus Limited for a number of years, and Jackson's Food Fair for a short while. He later tried his hands at opening his own business to include operating a taxi for a short while. Tony was a deep-rooted, family-oriented individual. He proudly spoke of his childhood and related stories to his wife and children of time spent with his father and helping his mother to do chores around the home. He had a tight bond with his brothers and sisters. He was a rock of the family. One who his siblings would turn to, to help them to solve problems experienced. He would not hesitate to defend any one of them if the need arose, especially sent. You heard earlier what sent said, right? Good. He would say over and over again, we promise mama to take care of Anne and sent because they were the little ones when she got sick and passed. He was a people person. Uncle Chick had friends of all ages and stages of life. He willingly assisted when assistance was requested. He could be classified as unreliable, Mr. Reliable. He would promise to be at a certain place by a certain time. Time would pass and he would be called. His response would be, just give me five more minutes, man. With the right of your foot. One hour later, he would turn up with a million and one very convincing excuses. He was a real cricket enthusiast. He often boasted about his cricketing poorest to his sons. He would say, I become a poor and live a country. Make me never make West in this team when we did young. No matter what time of night or day, 
the matches would start. He would fix himself in front of the television. And at that time, he became the coach, the umpire, the player, all in one. He would make comments like, these players have no brain. What does a coach have no use? I would do a better job. In my days, when we used to play down a clinic, would I make this team look like a fool? His son's interest in football motivated him to pay attention to the game. And he soon became a fan and started acting, you know, as if he was more knowledgeable about the game than they were. While performing his duties as a sales representative for Meat Plus Limited in 1986, he met Heather Thumbs. At first, this young lady, maybe shy, was a bit reserved. But he was very much interested in a relationship with her, so he persisted. This relationship soon blossomed and a strong bond developed between them. On February 17, 1990, they were joined together in holy matrimony. This union produced two children and one grandchild. About 12 years ago, Uncle Tony started developing health issues. He was advised to make certain lifestyle changes, but he stubbornly continued as he pleads, which caused his health to deteriorate. Then two years ago, he was diagnosed with a very serious illness and he started going downhill. During this time, he never complained much. Neither did he reveal this to many persons. Those close to him would sometimes see signs of his discomfort, but if he was questioned about how he was feeling, he would simply say, I'm all right, man. Or he might say, I'm feeling a little pain, but I will soon be all right. On the morning of Thursday, September 14, his wife and son realized his condition was worsening and he needed urgent medical attention. He objected to being taken to the hospital, saying that he would soon be all right and he would go to the doctor the following day. However, they did not allow him to have his own way. So he was taken to the Savannah Lamar Hospital. A few hours later, he breathed his last breath while being treated by a doctor with his wife by his side. We wish we could see you one more time, come walking through the door, but we know that is impossible. We will hear your voice no more. We know you can feel our tears and you don't want us to cry. Yet our hearts are broken because we can't understand why someone so precious had to die. We pray that God will give us strength and somehow get us through as we struggle with the heartache that came when we lost you. Tony will always be remembered by his wife, Heather, his children, Shane, Dushan, Dianika, Delroy Jr., and Ramoy, daughter-in-law, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, aunt, nieces, nephews, and a host of friends and relatives. Rest in peace.
we have been blessed from the start of the program until now. And so at this time, we will be blessed by the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we have listened to all the memories and we have engaged in the song as well as the prayers. And so at this time, I want you to be engaged in listening to the words of the Lord. So at this time, our speaker for the hour, Pastor Arton Wedderburn, will bring to us a message from God. Of course, we are here and all of us want to be comforted, don't it? Yes. So let us take comfort in God's word, especially for those who are mourning and for those who are Christians. We can be comforted by the word. Also, those of us who are non-Christians, of course, there is a word for you. Amen. And I'm sure it is your desire to listen to what Pastor Arton Weatherbird has in store for you. All right? You will listen to the word of God. So let me pray for you, your listening ears, so that you can allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your hearts today. But before Pastor comes, we will have the song of meditation from the Coot Savannah Seventh-day Adventist Choir, and then you'll hear the voice of Pastor Arton Wedderburn. In these uh, closing days of time, what joy the glorious hopes are for that soon no wondrous root of blood. He shall reign King of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming soon. He's coming soon, with joy we welcome his return. It may be morn, it may be night or noon, we know he's coming soon. The signs around in earth and God's faithful weakness is declared that the coming of the Savior draw it now. He's coming soon, he's coming soon. With joy we welcome his return. It may be it may be night or noon, we know he's coming soon. The dead in Christ who need us love. In countless numbers all shall rise. When through portal of the sky he shall come to prayer a prayer of paradise he's coming soon he's coming soon with joy we welcome his return earning it may be more it may be night or noon, we know he's 
coming soon and we who live in yet remain caught up shall meet our faithful Lord this hope we cherish not in vain but we comfort one another by this word. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy we welcome his return. It may be more. It may He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy we welcome his return. It may be more. It may be night or noon. We Thank you very much, Elder Williams. Thank you very much, choir members. We recognize the presence of Pastor Monroe, who is here, and also a reverend who serves the family, particularly gives leadership to the wife, Sister Heather, who is with us on the platform. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we've come for the funeral service of the late Delroy Perrin. And today I'd like to share a brief word with you from the book of First Samuel. From the book of First Samuel, chapter four, starting at verse 15. It's a brief story I'd like you to consider this afternoon. I read a few verses in your hearing. Now, Eli was 98 years old. How old was he? 98, and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he that came out of the army. And I fled today out of the army. And he said, what is there that has been done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled from the Philistines. And there has been a great slaughter. A great what? A great slaughter among the people. And your two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. How many persons have died so far? Two, Hophni and Phinehas. Verse 18, and it came to pass when he had made mention of the ark of God that he, Eli, how old was Eli? 98, fell off from the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck broke and he died. How many persons have died so far? Three, for he was an old man. How old was he? 98 and heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, was with child. She was pregnant, near to be delivered. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her ladies. That meant she's gone into labor. Yes? And about the time of her death, 
the women that stood by her said to her, do not fear, for you have delivered a son. But she answered not, neither did she care about it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God has been taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken and she died. How many persons have died so far? Eli, Hophni, Phineas, and Phineas's wife. Four persons, Dr. Archer. And also, before this news was broken, over 30,000 men had died that day. At least 30,000 and four people died in one day. Today, briefly, I speak to you under the caption, I have bad news. Father in heaven, we stand here today recognizing that we are standing on our graves. Life is filled with bad news. But in light of the darkness and the evil that threatens to suffocate the very breath of life that you've given us, may hope, may salvation, may the promise of a better day break through. May the good news be echoed today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Every morning when I'm transporting my wife to work, we have to leave at a certain time because of the traffic in Montego Bay. And every morning we leave, it's right in time to catch the news. Prevailing in the news was the recently concluded trial of Anthony Black man Brian, everybody has something to say about the sentences handed down. Some people are concerned about what's going on in the news. Prevailing in the news is the trial of one businessman accused of planning to have his wife murdered. The news is fraught with twists and turns of witness statements and cross-examinations. Bad news every day. We heard the bad news of what happened at B.B. Coke High School. Our young boy was badly beaten because he stepped on somebody's shoes. How he was beaten unconscious because he offended somebody's shoes. We heard the bad news of what happened in Ocho Rios Primary School. How 60 odd children could have been your own sons and daughters, could have been your own brothers and sisters rushed to hospital because some unidentified man sold them some sweets laced with THC. We heard the news of how a mother was bawling by the gate of the school, begging for somebody to stop and bring her child to the doctor. We heard the bad news of what has broken out between Israel and Hamas. How some people were partying their lives away until some groups parachuted down and, and brought the party to an abrupt end. How people were killed and our hospitals now are without power and electricity and how they've been threatened that there'll be no oil or gas until hostages are released. It seems like it's bad news every day. But even in the darkness, there is good news. 
For when that boy regained consciousness after being beaten unconscious, when he was being interviewed by nationwide news, he said, what would you say to that young man if you were to see him today? He said, I would forgive him. That's good news. There is good news for those 60 odd children whom, after consuming that seemingly innocent sweet, were rushed to the hospital in the emergency section. But praise be to God, they're back at school today. Even though bad news is plaguing Israel and Hamas and people are worried and fretting that, hey, now is the time. There is good news. For Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6, that when you see all these things, see that you be not troubled, for the end is not yet. Rather, when these things begin to happen, look up. For your redemption draws nigh. The reality of life is that bad news will always come. But as long as God is in your story, good news will be the end of the day. If I don't get to finish this sermon today, remember this. Though bad news comes, good news will end the story. Israel is in a rock and a hard place. Their priests are making a fool of themselves. Their priests are sleeping with the women in the temple. Their priests are taking what don't belong to them. And, and those who should come to worship are now angry at the priests and angry at God because it doesn't seem like there's no sanctity anymore. And, and the Bible said that the men of Israel abhorred the sacrifice of God. It literally means that they no longer regarded God with the sanctity and with the reverence that they should should just because of some priest but might i squeeze this in to somebody there are so many people vexed with god because of what somebody did in church there are so many people stop coming to church because of what the pastor said so many people stop coming to church because of what the elder did but might i say to somebody even when men make mistakes you still have to face god one day and i've gotten to the place in in my young life it doesn't matter what they're doing i know i'm not coming to church to worship man i'm coming to church to see god and i'm very confident that those same people who bring god's church into disrepute disrepute will be judged by him one day but i'm just trying to hold my head down and work out my salvation with fear and trembling for i know when jesus comes i can't say it's the elder i can't say it's the pastor i must only look at him and say my sins have been washed away by your blood israel was between a rock and a hard place people stopped coming to church because of the priest and the priests were so presumptuous that when they went into battle and their skin began to be whipped, they said, hey, let us go for the ark of God and bring it with us to fight our battles. Now, now they sent for the ark down by Shiloh. And when the ark came, there was such a loud noise in the camp that, that the Philistine army began to shake. And, and they said, what is going on? Somebody said, hey, the Israelites have brought the ark of their God in the camp but the philistines said hey don't be afraid of them because we can't end up serving them like they served us watch this watch this the israelites were excited that the ark was in the camp but not that god was there because they've gotten to the place where they've put 
God in such a small box that the only time they recognized God's presence was when the ark was there. And when the ark came, they began to jump and they began to clap and they began to dance. But, but I want somebody to understand today and every loud noise means sanctification. I want somebody to know today and every time you hear a pan knocking means that God is there. God is not looking for people who would worship him with loud modes. He's looking for people who will worship him with humble hearts. God isn't looking for people who will jump and prance. He's looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And I've realized that what God wants is not excitement, but sincerity. They brought the ark in the midst of their war and felt that God was with them. When the Philistines said, quit yourselves like men, pull up your boots and tighten your belt and set your soldier army suits right, we are going to war. The Bible says that on that day, over 30,000 footmen were slain. One man escaped with the news. And he ran from Ebenezer. He ran all the way to Eli. When Eli saw him, Eli said, hey, what news do you have? The young man said, Eli, your sons are dead. The young man said, Eli, over 30,000 people have died. And Eli, I've got bad news. The ark of God has been taken. When Eli heard the news, I don't know if it was a heart attack. I don't know if it was the shock that jolted his system. I don't know if his gasp was so deep that it caused him to teeter on his chair. But, but all the Bible said was that he fell off his seat backward and broke his neck. It, it seemed like the weight of Eli's body compounded the fall. Not only did he get a fracture, but he completely lost his life. That was bad news. Number two, the ark of God was taken and the priest of God was dead. When Phineas' wife heard the news, notice what the Bible says. That when she heard that her husband and her father-in-law was dead and that the ark of God was taken, she went into labor. E Eli's daughter-in-law, of course it hurt her that daddy-in-law died. Of course it hurt her that her husband died. Of, of course it hurt her that her unborn child's father died. But the greater pain came when she heard that the ark of God was taken. And the Bible said she named the child Ichabod. Let the church say Ichabod. Ichabod is a compound word. The joining of two words together that Phineas' wife used to describe the situation that she was experiencing. Kabod by itself meant glory. But when she called the child Ichabod by putting the I before the Kabod, she literally turned the word opposite. So, so if, if Phineas' wife were living in present day Jamaica, she would say it is non-glorious because she's a Hebrew. She can only say Ichabod. Why did she call the child the opposite of glory? Because God was no longer part of Israel. Why do we die? Is it because of sickness? Why do we die? Is it because of old age? Why do we die? Is it because of the gun? Why do we die? Is it because of arson? Why do we die? Is it because of poor road users? These, I say to you, are not the causes, but the symptoms. The real cause of death is separation from God. When God 
God created man, he created him to have a constant relationship with him. When God created man, he surrounded him with glory so he could stay in God's presence. But, but when man sinned, the glory was lifted from man and man was plunged into sin, shame and disgrace. Man was plunged into Ichabod. And the reason we die is because the glory has departed. The reason we die is because God, the link between God and man has been broken. The reason we die is because we are presumptuously set in our sins. The reason we die is because the glory is no longer in man's life. And that was the bad news that came to Israel. That was the bad news that broke upon the priest's family that day. That, that was the bad news that broke upon the people because no, their priest is dead and the ark of God is taken. But in every bad news, there's a glitter of hope. Y'all, y'all know the parable when you when you were growing up. Uh, there is a silver lining behind every dark cloud. Because guess what? When the ark of God was taken, the Bible said that the Philistines captured the ark and brought it down and put it in their home temple before their God Dagon. But when they wake up the next morning, Dagon was on his face. They said, Hey, this doesn't look right, but maybe there was a strong wind last night. They said, Hey maybe there was an earthquake that we didn't feel so they put up Dagon again before the ark of God they came back the next day and Dagon was on his face with his hands cut off somebody must understand today the Philistines might have whipped you but God is still fighting your battles somebody must know today it may feel like the devil is having the upper hand but the last time I checked from in the garden of Eden he was told that he's a liar. The last time I checked, my God told Satan, you won't have the final say. And even though we've been plunged into darkness, light is coming at the end of the tunnel. The thing about God is that the problem that mankind is in, mankind will always try to fix it until he runs out of options and recognizes that only God can help him. Remember whom the Israelites were fighting, the Philistines. And when they went down to fight them, over 30,000 of them died in one day. But when God was brought into the story, their chief God was destroyed. I want somebody to take this message today. It doesn't matter who is on your side. You need to have God in your life. It doesn't matter who has your back. You need to have God in front of you. It doesn't matter whom you can call on. You need to ensure that God is a very present help in the time of trouble because trouble is coming. But blessed are they whose refuge is the Lord. It's not the first time that God was captured though. For in the upper room, he sat around his disciples and told them, hey, tonight the son of man will be betrayed into the hands of men. Everybody said, who's going to betray? It's not me, Lord. Is it I? Could never be me. And, and Jesus sat there in the very presence of humanity. God clo clothed in the garb of human flesh. And he sat there, the living ark of God before men. And he told them tonight I'd be captured. They walked down to get Gethsemane and there in the middle of the battleground, he bowed his head and prayed, God, if it is be possible, let this cup pass from me because he knew that the battle was raging hot. He, he sweat until his sweat became as droplets of blood, but he ended his prayer with this one statement. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The Roman soldiers came, Judas kissed him and 
said the man that I kissed is him. They took him in chains. They dragged him down to Caiaphas' hall. They dragged him over to Pilate. Pilate sent him to Herod. Herod sent him back. The people said, when Pilate said, I see no fault in him, the people said, crucify him. They dragged him through the streets of Jerusalem. They stripped him naked. They hung him on a cross. But Satan did not know that when he was bringing shame to God, he was bringing back the glory to man. For it was by this measure that Jesus would bring good news. And there on the cross, Pilate wrote, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And when people from all over the world came, they saw Jesus' words come to pass. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Satan thought he had God cornered. Satan thought he had the plan of salvation destroyed. But he did not know that what he thought would bring God shame would result in glory for all creation. And on that day, when Jesus died, it was good news for everybody. On that day, when Jesus died, the cloud of sin that covered this world was finally dispelled when the grace of God broke through. The reality of life is this. We all have an appointment with death. But the better news is this, God has defeated death. That's why he could sit around the table and say, just after he told them that he would be betrayed, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, Believe also in me. In my father's house are, are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. That's why I can trust my Jesus. Because he had not yet gone to the cross. But he knew that he'd overcome the cross. Just so he can give us good news. Today I ask you. Is your life filled with news of death after death after death? The only way you can stop it is to have Jesus in your life. I don't know how long you've been living, but I know something is coming that will make you question the very fabric of life itself. I encourage you to meet Jesus. I don't know how many years of experience you may have had, but this much I know there is no battle that my God can't win. And if your life is filled with bad news after bad news, I encourage you to try the good news. It's called the gospel. I encourage you to try the good news. It's a good news that said Satan is defeated and all those who are one with God will become sons of God. To the family, to the church, to the community, I came bearing bad news. But at the end of my bad news is good news. Jesus is alive. Choose Jesus today. Father in heaven, you only know what it's like to experience death after death after death after death. For all created beings were your children who've wandered away and so many of them have left trying to fight their own battles. So many of them have falsely and deceitfully told themselves that it is well with their souls just because they have a physical representation of you in their lives, yet they don't have that spiritual conversion. So many people have gone to the grave with bad news, the end of their story, but today all those who are alive I ask that you will help them to choose Jesus for we know not when bad news will come our way we know not whether we are 19 8 or 98 like Eli was that a shocking news will come to us. But we ask you, God, no matter what comes, may we have the confidence to be able to say, it is well with my soul. We pray that you speak to hearts today 
for them to choose Jesus. For we ask these things in the conquering name of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen and amen for that message. At this time, we will now have the prayer for the bereaved family from Reverend Michael Solomon, JP. So I invite him to come and pray for the bereaved family. At this time, I'm going to ask the family to stand at this time. As we come in the presence of God to acknowledge his presence and to hold more hearts as we ask for comfort and strength for the family. Let us pray. Compassionate and gracious God in Christ. I lift the family and friends of the deceased, Delroy, and especially Heather, Wamai, and Dishon. Touch them with your mighty hand and help them to find healing in you. Wrap your arm of love around them that they may not be filled with grief. May they seek you daily for comfort and support. May the fond memories they shared with the deceased Delroy remind them of the love that you have for them. Protect the family that Delroy has left behind and remind them to live in unity, love, and harmony. Fill their hearts with the assurance that your servant Delroy is in your presence. Let your steadfast love at this time abide in their heart and help them to experience your embracing love as they mourn their loss. This I ask you in Christ our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Sit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your cooperation. We thank you for your support. We will now be dispersing to the graveside. We ask that you'll join us in standing as we sing the closing hymn. After the first verse, the platform party will leave, followed by the family members. We ask the pallbearers to gather at the porch to transport the, the casket to the hearse. We ask that we'll seek to do so as orderly as possible. Your cooperation will be most appreciated as we seek to end this service with reverence. Please stand with us as we sing together. A wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see.
a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love, covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior. Thank you. 